Welcome, everyone. This is a North Florida Poetry Hub Acrostic Poetry Workshop. And welcome. We're here with Doc Jennings, the inaugural Poet Laureate of South Euclid, Ohio. He is going to be leading our workshop and he's the inaugural Poet Laureate of South Euclid, Ohio, the poet, author, educator, and longtime scout leader, retired podiatrist. He's read for the poetry program for Heights Arts in Cleveland Heights, Ohio, and for the Cleveland Photo Fest. He's been a writer in the window at Apple Tree Books for National Novel Writers Month. He's also the creator moderator of Second Sunday Poets, a poetry reading and open mic sponsored by the William N. Skirtball Writers Center at South Euclid, the Lindhurst branch of the Kuvaya County Public Library, which has also published his work in five of their yearly anthology chapbooks. He's also the creator and host of A Wine Nights, a monthly online poetry event. He's been published extensively, both nationally and internationally, one of which was a poem in the Lindhurst Ohio Life Magazine of June of 2020. Doc's been featured reader for Bahiel Poetry in Cork, Ireland. Doc's favorite quote is by the late Rod McEwen, it doesn't matter who you love or how you love, but that you love. Doc's passion is poetry and teaching. Tonight, he's going to share his knowledge of what acrostic poetry is and how a poet goes about writing it. So with that, here's Doc. <laughs> Take it away, Doc. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it's uh, lovely to be with you folks tonight. Uh, I just am sad that some of those who signed up are going to miss out. Uh, ekphrastic poetry, for those who have not looked it up or don't know, is poetry written about a piece of art. It's uh, it's very ancient uh, and the most ancient piece known at present is that written by Homer. And by the way, Homer writing and now analysts have discovered was not just one person, but a number of persons probably over uh, several centuries. So uh, the poetry of Homer was not all written by a person. Uh, but uh, the oldest piece is, is as I said, uh, a poem about the shield of Achilles. And uh, no one knows what the shield looked like, but the description is very vivid, and uh, especially of the way it was fabricated. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. Uh, it's quite long, unfortunately, but uh, the uh, it goes. I'm going to start probably in about the middle. The father of the fires to the black labors of his forge retires. Soon as he bade them blow, the bellows turned. Their iron mouths and where the furnace burned, resounded, breathed. All at once the blast expires and 20 forges catch at once the fires. But, uh, and then uh, skipping down some lines. Then first he formed the immense and solid shield 
rich various artifice emblazed the field. Its utmost verge, a threefold circle bound. It's that's a reflection of the uh, three ring uh, sea rings which surrounded Atlantis. Uh, a silver chain suspends the massy round. Five ample plates the broad expanse compose and godlike labors on the surface rose. There shown the image of the mastermind, their earth, their heaven, their ocean he designed. Uh, it goes on in the same vein for quite a few paragraphs, stanzas. Uh, but ekphrastic is essentially an exposition by you, the writer, on what you see in a particular work of art. Uh, it may not be the same image that the artists themselves were reflecting on when they drew, uh, drew their art, painted, or uh, took a photograph, or even or sculpted, whatever the, the type of art it is, you can write about it. In fact, you can even write about someone else's poem because a poem is art. So it's, it's a very wide area about which you can write. And each of us may look at, at the same piece of art and write something entirely different about it because each of us has had our own experiences and our own way of looking at things had, which has developed. Uh, <laughs> I haven't done this uh, for quite some time, so please excuse me if I'm, I'm a bit slow on it. Uh, but uh, another piece that uh, was, oh, sorry, that is widely known in ekphrastic work is, is owed on a Grecian urn by Keats. It's a beautiful piece about a beautiful urn. Uh, and it could be about many a Grecian urn. I'll just read the first stanza. Thou still unravished bride of quietness, thou foster child of silence and slow time, sylvan historian who canst thus express a flowery tale more sweetly than a rhyme. What leaf fringed legend haunts about thy shape of deities or mortals or of both in, temp in Tempe or the dales of Arcady? What men or gods are these? What maidens loath? What mad pursuit? What struggle to escape? What pipes and timbrels? What wild ecstasy? All descriptive of a Grecian urn which depicts men and women of that ancient era. So if you do a decent ekphrastic piece, somebody uh, write, uh, reading your poem can sometimes see in their mind the image of what you have written about and be able to say, oh, I know what you, what you mean. But uh, again, I'm, I'm floundering a bit. Hold on. Uh, open. But literally, Ekphrasis is a description and you narrate and reflect on the perceived action of the particular piece. And uh, 
it's just, it's your art reflecting their art in essence. And uh, I'd like to screen share with you. It's been a rough day for me, I apologize. <coughs> One one friend's uh, daughter uh, daughter in law lost her baby, and another friend's mother passed away. So it I'm just so sorry. It just one of those things. Uh, let's see. Like I, Screen like share. Died, so we can all take a moment and grieve for those who have passed. Uh, oh, here we go. Desktop. Share. Okay, why has my desktop? Oh, I know why my desktop is not showing. <laughs> it's because I have a background. That's lovely. Let me see if I can. You can send them to me. Laura trying to rack up more points. <laughs> <laughs> I want more zeros, more zeros. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I wish it could be done. Okay, where can I undo this? The background. We were seeing your desktop. You were. Yeah, we yeah. were. I don't know why I wasn't. Uh, Choose virtual background. Here we go. Come on. Oh, you're trying Have you to open the document background? already? No, I'm. What I'm doing is I am uh, removing my virtual background so that hopefully my screen will share. There. Yeah, I you think should, you know now. one of the uh, if you open the document oh. itself. Okay. Then you can click on that document. All right. Okay, this is a oh, cool fabric piece, which was exhibited at Heights Arts, and about which I wrote a piece of poetry. And the artist uh, felt that it it really expressed what uh, she was trying to say with it. Gateway to the future. All, I, all have lived many lives in many worlds and walked many a path. Worlds and paths overlapped, intertwined in raveled polyglot babble. Stand now in echoing silence at the nexus of time and the gateway to the future. So it, uh, with the picture, now, why is the picture not opening? Okay, as you can see, the picture that I took of that fabric piece, shows the overlapping and intertwining of the, of the fibers, which to me are pathways. And at the end where it's raveled, that's a gateway. So it's the gateway to the future. And the, the artist herself, um, escaped from China by traveling a variety of roads and back ro pathways and even trackless ways to finally find a gateway to, to leave her country. And then made it here to the US and that she is now studying art at the Cleveland Institute of Art. So for her, it, it's a true, it was a true gateway coming here. And 
now what I would like, I'm going to unshare the screen. I would like each of you in turn to share a piece of poetry if you have any, uh, ekphrastic work that is. Uh, we'll start with, um, I see the name Kraus. I don't see, I don't see, I can't hear you. You're not. Pat, yeah, it's Pat Kraus, but I don't have a piece of poetry to share, so. Okay, we'll move on. Nula? You're on mute, Nula. Unmute to talk. I don't have any ekphrastic poetry right now. Okay. Yeah. And Laura, do you? Unmute if you're going to talk. I'm not sure if I. The, um, hmm. I'm looking through different ones to see if any are. To, oh, why I don't write? you just read something that you've written about a piece of your artwork? As long as it's short. And maybe you can show us the artwork. Um, let's see here. I guess everything that I've done has been in things. Some of them I have not written down. Some of them have been, um, You want me to move on while you move on? Looking? I'll come and come back to me, and I will. I will. Laura. Okay, yes. Shani. Unfortunately, Doc, I don't have anything completed. Oh, okay. So I guess <laughs> I'm the only one. <laughs> You're the only one. You should have told us um, in the email, Ruth, that you wanted us to do something. I didn't some know. And I didn't and know you wanted us to read. I didn't okay. know. Um, so, Laura, put up the the picture of the the the, the window. window. The window. And this is called Wings. It's called Wings. Forehead pressed to pain. Sweet rose scented breeze. Brilliant ruby tones meld. Shimmer a summer's day. Blossoms ripe to bloom. Sparrow on the wing. Monarch transforms, unfettered, flies free. I like that. And that's, that is a collage. It's, it's hard to see. It's like a multi um, textural and there's actually like silk flowers on there and it's decoupage um, uh, and acrylic paint and lace and upcycled materials and there are yeah it's it's hard to really appreciate the artwork in a picture but and then if you put the other one up Laura. Hang on a sec. Hmm. 
And they each have the poem is mounted on the canvas as well. I made these last year. Can you expand that or or not? Um, no. You can pinch out. No. I don't know if she can make it bigger. I'm making it bigger on my screen. Is it? But it, I, I don't know yeah, if you are. It's bigger. Yeah, you can kind of see. And that's good because you can see the centerpiece. That's kind yeah. of way too big. That's way well, big. you said make it big. <laughs> I'm gonna back out just a little. Yeah, back out. Back did you out. make this, Ruth? I did. And it's, it's very you nice. can see there, that's good. I can see oh, well, made that, for you. that was good. Well, okay. We've got, so you can see it's multimedia and it's a collage. And um, the centerpiece, that pin in the center, the um, that's a very old. Um, anyway. So you can zoom back out so they, they've seen that parts, those parts of it. So, and here's the, the poem. Full pink peachy blooms, breeze thick with fragrance, ramble on floral pathways, stir a quiet writer's pen. Brilliant ruby tones meld splashes of a spring's day. Impish girls cuddled kitten, smiles in encircled heart, capture gems in sunlight. Music tones lilt on a breeze, catch the spring frocks trim. An old mother's memories scattered among the pearls in a bloom's reflection. Beautiful. Yeah. And there's like real pearls um, glued on there. Um, so it's like a, yeah. yeah. There you go. Nice. Very nice, very just very descriptive of the of the painting, and if you sit back with your eyes closed, you can you can visualize the scene you're, uh, of which you speak in your poetry. Mm -hmm. yep. Very good. Uh, any Thank comments you. by anyone else about the uh, about either of the uh, her of uh, Ruth's pieces? I'm hearing something in the background from someone. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Any comments from anyone? The poem and the artwork is so beautiful. I really enjoyed it, yes. It brings okay. me to another place. Good, good. A beautiful that's, place. That's all part of it. Reminds, okay. me, of a, my, reminds me of a Valentine cord. <laughs> there you go. Yes, it does. And... And that vintage feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Anything from Shani or Shani? No, I, I, I love it. It's gorgeous, Ruth. Thank you. But does her poetry to you 
reflect the 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 painting uh, or the collage, I should say. I actually like the way that you incorporated the roses and the butterflies and things that I can visually see in the. And I think the one thing that works very well is you have a lot of elements in your picture to really incorporate into your poem. Like you have the pearls and the butterflies and the roses. And so there's a lot of stuff to, you know, play off of in your poem. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's what acrostic poetry is about. Uh, and now I'd like to have you perform a little exercise in ekphrastic poetry. Uh, I will screen share a picture with you and I'd like you to write something. Uh, let's see, what time is it now? Stop. Uh, Question, when you're writing, what, how, do you, how do you start off? Do you, is there any method you use to start this off or you just kind of just write whatever you see? Uh, the ekphrastic poetry is writing what you see and what you feel about what you see so that you can give someone else the essence of it. So what, and the style of the poetry is irrelevant. You can do a haiku, you can do uh, rhymed poetry, you can do unrhymed free, free verse, a guzzle. And if you don't know what a guzzle is, it's a, it's a form of, it's a Persian uh, poetry form used by Rumi. Laura, so, take the screen share down, please. Thank you. Thank you, dear. So it's, it, so ekphrasis, you're revealing what you see in the work, how it makes you feel, and what you want others to read into your work so that they can see essentially the original. Okay, I will share this piece with you. Uh, Okay, it's, this is an old window. A cousin of mine had rescued it from a trash heap in front of, a, uh, of an old house that was being redone. And she decided to put it to use again, but not at, as a window in her house. So, uh, it's 740 essentially at eight o'clock, have a piece. You've got 20 minutes. And everyone can mute that uh, and then when as you're done unmute
Two minutes left. Okay, who has something ready? Or would like to read whatever they've got, uh, they've written to this point. It doesn't have to be a complete poem. I'll read what I got. It's not a poem necessarily, but y'all can do with it what you want. <laughs> okay. Resting now against the wall, its panes punctured by a random ball, weathered and chipped, the red brace cross and gothic pin peaks, hinted it might once have graced a chapel with green and gold flickering across faces lining a pew. Or was it just a favored window seat for lingering with a book and gazing down at passersby along the street? It, it's, it, it needs work. You know oh. Good. It's very expressive of the of that window. I like it. it. It gives it gives a wonderful feel to it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. So I'm gonna. Uh, I have my granddaughter, and uh, <laughs> it's been extremely difficult to write. So I have a couple of lines. It's not anything complete. Nope. So. Um, don't worry about it, just let's hear. Okay. Red hues, chipped, weathered and worn, like love of ages, peeled back and torn. Hanes of colored glass, tiny, mo tiny moments of the past, broken in places, but not enough to last. Like little embraces. I am the old window pane, chipped, broken, longing to be free again. There you go. Nice. Very nice. nice. You, you've captured the the essence there, uh, and the and the uh, broken glass, it, the whole milieu of the window. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Nula, anything? Yes, yeah, I've got one. Um, the old window had its day. Who knew? Who knows what sights were seen through its lovely panes? It was time to replace the window, as the paint weathered and chipped, showed cracks comparable to an old face in broad daylight. The metal squares holding the glass together were stretched, and some were missing their pains like old friends that had gone away. The owner hated to throw out the window as it was part of their home throughout the good times and even the not so good times. It was, a, it was an aged treasure seen in photographs of days gone by. The lovely art was treasured by, the, the still lovely art was treasured by someone who 
couldn't stand to say goodbye. Very good. <laughs> Again, you've captured what I told you about the window's history, uh, plus uh, what you see in the window itself. Okay, who is next? Um, what about uh, Pat? You have anything for us? You have to unmute. Pat, unmute. <laughs> there I am. Okay. <laughs> what place or space did you, a weathered window, grace? Who stood there? Uh, can you grab my headphones, please? All right, I'm going to start again. What place or space did you, a weathered window grace, who stood behind, perhaps to hide discreetly, yet longing to penetrate the colored glaze, to behold what lay beyond, what mystery therein hidden, perhaps bidding you to break through the glass of your secluded space, to reveal a face long hidden, but longing to be free. So it's not so much a description of the window as it is what someone might have experienced behind the window. <laughs> that w that also works mm -hmm. very well. Uh, it, it, it does portray the window, but from a, uh, a totally different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. not, instead of the, the, uh, the person looking at the window, but that of the person looking through it. Right. So uh, I, I like that perspective as well. Okay, Ruth? Yes. Um, it needs work, but this is what I came up with so far. Misty green shimmers through, the light of summer gleams, rusty peels of paint curls round the leaded panes. Cathedral arches lead the way to heaven's gate. Nice, Ruth. Very nice. nice, very mm -hmm. nice. And that's uh, that's more of a philosophical, um, almost religious aspect to it, yeah. uh, w which is is wonderful as well. Uh, and. I'm going to uh, give you folks a project uh, to take your individual pieces of poetry about the, uh, this window and make one long poem of them. Okay. Okay. And uh, choose one among you to, to weave them together. And then I'd like to see the result in, uh, let's say, a month from now. Okay, we can work on that as a group. Yes, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. now let, let me read you the original poem, and then what I wrote just tonight ab about it. The original poem. Looking through the haze of age, the old window, layers of paint chipped, cracked, and faded, speaks of once glorious past, when leaded panes were clear and straight, frame fresh made and light. Look at me, see me as, one, as once I was, when compound eyes of red and green gave tint to sunny rays, and my son, my coat was glossy bright. Today, I am a remnant, but someone wants me still. To grace a porch or garden space is now my destiny. And I shall stand there straight and proud, ne'er more ignominy. And I wrote three senrus about it tonight. Wow. Our Artful Gothic pains now become shabby chic. Its new life begins. Eyes of leaded glass stare at us from bygone time through the haze of age. 
weathered wooden frame holding visions of the past, losing painted mask. Mm. Yeah. A lot you can do with one little, one, little, one little photograph there. Everybody seemed to have a little different take on it, which was interesting. But I noticed yeah, exactly. there were themes throughout it that we all picked up on. Mm. And there, yeah. were, there were similarities in things that multiple people said and wrote um, that were almost, we used almost the same words. And like that was paint. So many, yeah, and there's so many of us that, and yet we still came up with some things that were just similar. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the beauties of ekphrastic poetry. Everyone has their own view of what a piece of art is, what it means. Uh, it, it, it all depends on where we ourselves are coming from at that moment. And each moment we view things differently. So right now I write one thing. In 10 minutes, I might write something from a completely different perspective about the same piece of art, about the same photo. So ekphrastic poetry is essentially what you make of it at that time that you think someone else would see in it as well. And I'd like to, I really would like to see uh, what your combined efforts look like so choose one among you and have at it. Any questions, comments, random thoughts? Ex when explained again what it is you want us to do. Okay, take all of your poems <coughs> uh, and work them together as, as stanzas or interweave them uh, whatever way you feel the the entirety uh, works the best and I'd like to see the result okay because I, I think uh, in in combination uh, you're you're gonna be uh, it's going to be a, a, a an absolutely wonderful, wonderful poem. Not that, not that your individual poems aren't aren't wonderful, but as a group effort, it'll it'll be even greater. Can you email us one of? Can you email me the picture file, please? Um, Ruth, yes, I can. I can email you the file. Thank you. Uh, you don't have to do it right this minute. <laughs> okay, I shan't, I shan't. But uh, it's ekphrastic poetry or some, I've even seen some ekphrastic prose, but it's, it's always wondrously descriptive. And people uh, have said to me, how can you write this about that? And because it's the way I felt at that moment. You don't let somebody else's concept impinge upon yours. In other words, as, as they uh, used to say in the, uh, when I was a bit younger, do your own thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hey, awesome. So, and uh, that is what I have 
for this evening for you folks. Do you, us, do you want us all to like edit, copy, paste what we have into the chat? And so, so that is a great workshop, Doc. Thank you so much for well, doing this for North Florida Poetry Hub. We have all learned so much about ekphrastic poetry and how to write it. And you have given us at North Florida Poetry Hub a challenge, which we are going to undertake. And we'll get back to you with that. Very and, good. So thank you so much. You're welcome you, so much. Thank you. And uh, we all appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, great, great exercise. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, I've, I've attended other workshops where exercises have been uh, tossed out, challenges have been tossed out, and, and I thought, why not? <laughs> yeah, that was Thank great. Thank you so much.